Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we just did a head to head between two barrel proof bourbons Old Forester versus Jack Daniels. Which one's better? Welcome to the channel, bringing real world content to the real world whiskey consumer. Our head to head comparisons are always completely blind. We don't know what we're drinking, but you do. Uh, I think of interesting matchups that I pour into these here sample jars and they're entered into our blind pool. Then Aaron mixes them up. And today we have 18 possible pairings from our sample pool to randomly select to see which one we taste today. So yep. the whole idea is that we have no clue what we're drinking. That way you get our completely honest feedback on what's in the glass before we find out. So let's get into it. All right. We've got 18 down here. We're gonna run our randomizer. 10. 10th pair. So nine in the front row. So number 10. Number 10 right Lucky there. Lucky number 10. That's what we're drinking today. Let's get into it. Oh, that smells rich. It does. It smells kind of syrupy. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you would like it. Definitely smells like it's got some proof. Yeah. Although, I don't know why I said, yeah, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, just pretend like you do. Yeah, and no one will yeah, know the difference. Yeah. There's a lot of complexity going on here. It feels like it's just so much. My nose is having a really difficult time making heads and tails Ooh. of what I'm Yeah. What I'm smelling. I'll take a second sip. Oh. <laughs> that hits me in like the back of the mouth and then kind of up Ooh. the nose. Oh my goodness. That is good. And then it tingles. That is good. Yeah, you like you that's like got, that feel. That like that's got some proof on it. Wow, it is rich and it's like thick. still. It is rich and thick. That's a lot. Oily on the mouth feel. Oh, that's decadent. That's a lot. It is, but I like that. I know you do. Who am I? I might need to take a moment. Yeah, I mean, it's just all your classic bourbon notes. It's your caramels, your vanillas, your brown sugars. The oak is in there. Everything is really well balanced. This is this is an exceptional pour to me. As for as much as is going on with it, and as high at seemingly high a proof as it is, I'm not getting bowled over by the alcohol. Everything is really nice and in balance. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you say, buddy. <laughs> I'm still thinking about this one. Wow, it it does have like a syrupy sweetness to it on the nose and on the palate. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one yet. I have, I have, I have something to ponder. Yeah, that is just so rich. I like that a lot. Okay, that's our first impressions of glass one. We're gonna move on to glass two, give you our first impressions there. Okay, this is way more on the apple juicy side of the equation, yeah. like fruity sweetness. Yeah, I kind of get like, as I'm pulling the glass away, I get like an apple juice tinge to yeah. my nose. Not when I'm smelling it, it's kind of like when I pull it away. Yeah, if glass one were like deeper and darker and richer, this is definitely lighter and brighter. Yeah, oh yeah, I can tell the difference now. Yeah. Smelling them together. Yeah, when I smell um, the second glass, glass one becomes more syrupy smell. It's got some proof on it too. Does it? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that really, Ooh. that really punches you right in the face. I like this one. Yeah. I don't know why it's it, it's easier for me to drink. I, it doesn't punch me as hard as the first one does. Yeah. Well, the first one was so rich, and this one is is a little bit more bright. It feels more proofy to me. It feels like it's got a little bit more of an alcohol tinge to it, but it the with the lighter flavors, it I can see how it might be easier sipping. Yeah. They're both they're both they're, really punching you right in the taste buds. They're both really punchy, but I feel like they're completely different. They punch you in different ways. They do. Yeah. Punchy. That's like a good that's a good adjective. These are punchy bourbons. They're, they are punchy bourbons. This one's like a light like tingly. The other one was like a tingling like all the way in the back of my throat. 
man, these taste that is, strong. Yeah. Yeah. That is a stout pour. Definitely. I mean, it's way more on like the apple caramel mm -hmm. side of the equation. Little light caramel and just a lot, a lot of apple. Just that's mm -hmm. about all I'm getting on that. And that fruity sweetness. I'm not getting apple specifically, but I can see how you would yeah. like say that. Yeah. On the taste, but yeah. Yeah. All right. It's, these are both. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting matchup when we do our scoring. So yeah. we're going to take a break. We're going to clear our palates. A, B, compare these two. We're going to write our scores down and we'll be back with our scoring soon. Our scoring system is super simple. It's a common sense thumbs up system where one thumb equals one point, two thumbs equals two points, just okay is worth half a point, no points if we give it thumbs down in a category. There are 10 possible points across five categories. Those are nose, flavor, and experience, which make up our tasting score. And then later, once we find out what these are, we can give them a retail score, which is based on price and availability, and a consumer score based on whether we would buy it again or not. We'll get to retail score and consumer score later on. Right now, we need to focus on nose, flavor, and experience. All right. Aaron, where are you at for those for your tasting score on glass one? Okay, so for glass one, I gave it a two. I gave it one thumb up on nose, half uh, just okay on a flavor, and just okay on experience. Interesting. I gave glass one a perfect score on tasting. Wow. Two thumbs I up on the nose. I figured you'd rate it high. Two thumbs up on the nose, two thumbs up on the flavors, two thumbs up on the experience. Dang. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this. We'll get around to that, but okay, let's get okay. to our scores for glass two okay, first. Okay. What are your tasting scores for glass two? So for glass two, I gave it a four. I gave it um, two thumbs up on nose, one thumb up on flavor, and one thumb up on experience. For glass two, tasting score, I gave it a five. I gave it two thumbs up on the nose, one thumb up on flavor, two thumbs up on the experience. Okay. So do you have any notes from our time when we were AB in them? Um, well, I think glass one, it, I gave it a thumbs up on the nose because it did smell good. And while it has a lot of flavor, it wasn't a, it wasn't the flavor that I liked. So that was glass two for me. That's why I gave it just an okay on flavor. It has a lot of flavor. Yeah. And it wasn't as great of an experience because I didn't particularly like the flavor. That's fair. And it was very strong and it was very heavy feeling. Like it almost yeah. felt like eating a very heavy meal. And sometimes I don't want to feel like that. So that's why I gave glass one a two. And for all those reasons are why I gave it two thumbs up across really? the board. I mean, so, that, that checks other, out. Other than the fact that I like the flavors more. I said that it was rich and syrupy on the nose. It's just amped up classic bourbon flavors with a nice sweet oak finish that went on for a long time. It just finished for days is what I wrote. It did, yeah. It's thick, it's oily, it's viscous. It reminds me of a liquefied Snickers bar, like just chocolate, peanut kind of just all that richness like a, it's just, it is a heavy it heavy pour. it feels heavy like if this yeah. were a beer this would be like a stout to me yeah yeah that's a that's an accurate parallel yeah it, i loved glass one glass two i also really liked it also had a lot going on yeah but like you said for glass one glass two just wasn't quite to my flavor profile yeah i gave it two thumbs up on the nose because it had a lot i mm -hmm. said it said it had an apple sweetness but I almost gave it only one thumb up because it had a little bit of a stringency on the nose. Okay. See, that's funny because for me, glass two was one of the very few that I didn't uh, immediately get blown away by the alcohol smell when I yeah. smelled it. Normally that's a yeah. thing for me. My nose takes a while to open up. Mm -hmm. And this one, I didn't like get blown away by the alcohol at first, which is why I gave it a two thumbs up on nose. Yeah. Personally. It's, I mean, they're both very good. These are, yeah. these are both very good. Yeah. I feel like, this There's one? no way in the world these are either one of these are going to be available because they're so good. You but I, I really hope they're both available and I hope that they're both decent priced because yeah, I like both of these quite a bit. I do want to say that this one drank a little lighter feeling to me. Like I said, this one was kind of heavy. This one drank a little, it felt a little fresher, I think, because of those apple yeah. undertones or whatever they are, notes. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why I liked, I rated this one higher because I like that lighter, fresher feeling while I was drinking it. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't use the word lighter, but I would use the word brighter. 
the flavors okay. are definitely yeah, brighter. Yeah. Glass two, when we were actually A-B testing them, um, I went back and forth and glass two actually made my tongue go numb. Really? <laughs> it, was, it, it made my lips tingle, Yeah, but I liked that. It's so. packing, it is packing a punch, so <laughs> yeah. these both are. not Yeah. Um, no surprise, you have a four on glass two for tasting score, two for glass one. Glass two is your favorite. No surprise here. Glass one is my favorite. Not a shocker. So this is this was fascinating. It, it wasn't difficult for me to choose. It wasn't difficult for you to choose a favorite here. Mm -mm. But these are both excellent. I, like I said, I hope these are both available and I hope they're both well priced. I don't think either of those things may be true, but let's, we'll see. Let's find out. Let's find out what they are. Glass one is number 15 okay. and glass two is number 14. Okay. Glass one is number 15. Glass number one is Old Forester Barrel Proof, 128.1 proof, $80. Wow, really? Yeah. Okay, what's glass two? Glass two is Jack Daniels Barrel Proof, 130.3 wow. proof at $70. For 14? Wow. Yeah, and 15. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, so these are proofy. These are yeah. these are up there. And I knew that I could t I could tell that by just yeah. tasting them and I'm not a a, a connoisseur, so I could yeah. tell that. So this is this is a fascinating matchup. Jack Daniels, Old Forester are both owned by Brown Foreman. Okay. Oftentimes people say they catch a lot of the same flavor notes in these two pours. Interesting. Uh this particular bottle of Jack Daniels is a single barrel. All their barrel proof offerings are single barrel. Okay. So there's 150-ish bottles of this that exist in the world. But there's Jack Daniel's single barrels are everywhere. Barrel, just different, barrel proof. Different barrels. Different barrels, but gotcha. it's still the same kind of signature Dak, Jack Daniel's flavor profile okay. and Dak Daniel's as well. I so, mean, either one. But a lot of people say they get a lot of banana on that. Now, oh, if I, I didn't get that. If I would have known it was Jack Daniel's, if you tell me that, I can get banana and oak. I don't. But I'm not. We're not trying to figure out what we're drinking. We're just trying to experience the yeah. pours and kind of relay that experience to you guys as best we can, more so than individual flavor notes, unless it really jumps out of the glass. This Old Forcer Barrel Proof, also a single barrel. A lot of people think these drink really hot. They do, it does. Uh, yeah. These it, both pack a wallop. Yeah, I mean, you could tell how much is left in my glass. I couldn't yeah. drink it because it was yeah. well, slightly painful. No, no, I'm not saying I'm not going to. <laughs> I just, it's... It's gonna take some time. <laughs> you, have to, you have to sit with it for a bit. Yeah. Okay. I thought I was about to get no, lucky. No. no, no. <laughs> okay. You're not 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 getting that lucky. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it okay. on our retail score and our consumer score, so that we can give both of these pours a real world score, which is factoring in the consumer metrics along with our tasting scores, yeah. what we call our real world score. So glass one was Old Forester, eighty dollars in our Nashville, Tennessee market. Jack Daniels Barrel Proof, $70. Yeah, I know you were saying, I know you said that information when you told me what they were, yeah. but I was so shocked that that's what they were yeah. that I didn't even hear you. I was, my brain was just too, yeah. too frazzled. It was just exploding. Yeah, yeah. so 80 and 70, yep. so comparable in price. $10 is, is not too big of a difference. Old Forester Single Barrel Barrel Proofs are they definitely go off the shelves a lot faster than Jack Daniels barrel proofs okay. do. These do pop up from time to time in the market. It's definitely uh, harder to get your hands on one of these. Okay. Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. It's in our market, we are in Tennessee. So <laughs> it's kind of Jack Daniels headquarters yeah. here. And there's a lot of Jack Daniels barrel proofs on the shelf. I, I, can, I can throw a rock and hit 15 bottles of Jack Daniels barrel proof. <laughs> Don't do that. From our front door. Yeah, I wouldn't want to hit a bottle of this. I want to drink a bottle of this. So they're both very good. Um, comparable price. Jack Daniels in our market's a little bit more available. It okay. seems like in some markets, Old Forester barrel proof may be more available, but we're basing this on our market yep. with our metrics. You gotta, you have to weigh your own market and your own metrics into account mm -hmm. when you're doing scoring like this. So for retail score, $80, hits the shelves but goes pretty quick versus $70 sits on the shelves you can probably find one price and availability taken into account mm -hmm. what are your retail scores for glass one well the fact that i rated glass one fairly low-ish on my tasting score i'm gonna say my retail score is just okay yeah it's 80 dollars, which isn't a ton of money but it's also it's a lot of money to spend for something that you don't love correct and that's exactly why i'm yeah. just gonna give it just okay 
uh, retail score just okay, and consumer score just okay. Yeah. It's not thumbs down. It's not thumbs down territory, but it's just okay for me. Yeah. I would give my retail score for Old Forester Single Barrel Barrel Proof two thumbs up. I actually Whoa. want to enter this into our blind pool alongside George T. Stagg okay. because this, to me, the flavor profile of this glass is just right in my wheelhouse. It's have right I, in my sweet spot. Have I had George T. Stagg before? You have. Oh. It's been in two prior head to heads. <laughs> I don't remember these things. <laughs> she doesn't keep up. I don't keep up it's at like, all. It's, I just. It's, it's in it's and just, out. Like she's just, she's not retaining. So. I'm just enjoying <laughs> spending time with you. There you go. That's all. And I hope you're enjoying spending time with us as yeah, well. Yeah, I do so, too. <laughs> yeah, so I would give it, I would give this two thumbs up on the retail score. Where are you at for glass two on retail score? So, okay. Jack Daniels barrel proof, single barrel. And it is in our market pretty readily available, mm -hmm. $70. You know, I would give it, I'm such a cheapskate. She's not kidding. And $70 to me is a lot to spend on a bottle, but I do like it enough. I would give it a thumbs up on retail score. I'll okay. say thumbs up on retail score. So for consumer score, so retail score for glass one, two thumbs up. Consumer score for glass one, thumbs up. I'd absolutely buy that again. I would almost lean towards giving that two thumbs up, personally speaking. But knowing that there are single barrel expressions and that there is some variance, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go out of my way to get one. I'm not gonna stockpile it. You know, I'm not gonna buy multiple bottles. It just, it, it, there's too much variance in these. But for this particular bottle, if I could know that I could get this bottle again, I would buy four or five of them. But I'm not gonna do that to any Old Forester barrel proof. So wow. thumbs up for me. So, and consumer score for glass two, where are you at? Um, I would Are also, you buying it again? I would buy it again. Yeah. I would buy it again. I wouldn't go out of my way to buy it if it wasn't available, but it's available, so I'd buy it again. Yeah, glass two for me, Jack Daniels Barrel Proof, I'd give it two thumbs up on the value and availability in our market, so retail score, two thumbs up. To get a barrel proof offering from Jack Daniels for 70 bucks is, is a great value as far as I'm concerned, and the bottle is absolutely beautiful. Like, even if you don't like barrel proof offerings, get the just regular single barrel, 90 something proof, makes a great gift. Like they're beautiful bottles for whether I would buy this again or not. I'd absolutely, I'd love to keep a bottle of Jack Daniels mm -hmm. barrel proof around. I'm not gonna, again, not stockpile them, but I'm gonna give it thumbs up on the consumer score for buying that again. Mm -hmm. For our real world score, where are you at for glass one? For glass one, I am at a three out of 10. Yikes. Yeah. my. Retail score is a 0.5, my consumer score is a 0.5, just okay. And you add that to my tasting total, which was two, you get three. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> that is rough. In stark contrast to your score, my retail score was two thumbs up, two. My consumer score was a one, thumbs up. And my tasting score was a perfect six. So Old Forester Barrel Proof, gets a nine out of 10 for me. Wow. So wow, nine out of 10 for me, a three, three. out of 10 for you on glass one. So, wow. Yeah. That's And that just goes to show you- We are you, a house divided. We are, we typically do have quite different palettes. Yep. So let's go into glass two, real world score. Where are you at for Jack Daniels Barrel Proof? Okay, so for retail score, I gave it a thumbs up and a consumer score, I gave it a thumbs up. Um, add those two points to my tasting total, which was four. I gave Jack Daniels Barrel Proof a six out of 10. Six out of 10, that's a good solid which score. Is above average. Yeah, I gave it two thumbs up on the retail score for price and availability. I gave it a thumbs up on the consumer score for buying it again. Add that to my five from the tasting score and that gives Jack Daniels Barrel Proof an eight out of 10 in real world score for me. So, so you, I liked both of these yeah, quite a lot. Yeah. I did. These are these are right in my wheelhouse for what I like. Yeah, and you tend to like you really enjoy higher high proof. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I want something that's gonna gonna grab my attention and hold on to it. Yeah. Like when we go out to Nashville hot chicken, I'm not getting the mild. Like I want an experience. Yeah. And these are full flavored, full proofed experiences that you're right. you you better buckle up to and, to go for yeah. these. 
Yeah. And and that explains a lot of why you like that. And I yeah. generally prefer more easy sippers. Yeah. So that explains yeah. a lot for me as well. And the way we built the scoring system, it meets you where you're at. So if you're someone like me who really likes high proof, then you're going to rate the experience of something like these two glasses higher mm -hmm. than you would something lower proof. Mm -hmm. Like something lower proof, I'm going to rate that experience lower because there's just not enough going on in there for me. It's it. Tastes like I'm drinking Diet Coke or like watered down tea or something. Do you think you fried your taste buds with all the hot chicken? <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> that's not a bad theory, actually. <laughs> you need more. That natural hot chicken is not Because you can't playing. taste. Yeah, that's. You know what? I hadn't considered that, but I might need to give some. I need, I need to ponder that one. Yeah, you do. Whereas you, you tend to like something lower proof yeah. and nuance and all that stuff is still great for you. Yeah. But you like it to come in a little bit more of a low proof point, not quite so grab your taste buds right. and rip them out of your The enjoyment throat. factor for me is something I can sip easily without yeah. like shocking my system. Can I have that? Yeah, you can have it. Yeah. I can have it. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. <laughs> in the summer. So, <laughs> summer in July. Wait. Christmas in July. Christmas, Christmas in July. July. There we go. Okay. It's not July and it's not Christmas, but I'm happy to have this glass. So... <laughs> All right, y'all, that's it for this episode for this week. Our head-to-head -head challenge weekly. We love doing these things. We hope you're enjoying watching them too. Aaron, take us out of here. Thank you so much for watching, as Josh said. Um, if you did enjoy watching this video, please hit that thumbs up button. You can give us a point by hitting the thumbs up button. Um, you can't hit it twice, so you can't give us two thumbs up. I see what you did. Like yeah. the points in the system yeah. and you did the thumbs up. Tell you what, like, if you really liked it, click it once and then unclick it so that it goes away and then click it. It's so nice. The video is so nice. You got to like you it could, twice. Yeah. So if you liked it, like it. Yeah. Um, and then also, if you want to keep seeing content like this from us, hit the subscribe button and you'll be um, on the list to be notified whenever we post more videos. Yeah. It's an exclusive list. We don't just let anybody. We don't it. give it away to anybody. Yeah. And if you check the link in the description or you go to patreon.com slash stuff and whiskey, these blind tastings that we do are our bread and butter. This is what we love about this hobby. Mm -hmm. And so you can sign up on there to be part of Patreon. And there's the, the two top tiers on there. You get blind tasting kits to be able to do things like this in your own home, with yourself, with your friends, with your family, however you want to do it. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So that's there. And there's other benefits as well. All kinds of stuff. You yeah. get access to our scoring rubrics, all of our information, our scores for all these things. So you if, can if get... you know that you align with Erin's palette, yeah. then you can see what she scored things as. If you align with my palette, you can see what I scored things as. You can use that to inform your next purchase at your local liquor store. So we try to bring you guys value. That's our thing. We have fun with this and we want you guys to, to find some value and some fun in this as well. Yep, so. exactly. Until next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers.